please welcome Andrew Kneebone with his presentation, his speech, Deep, Deep Down. With his speech, Deep, Deep Down, please welcome Andrew Kneebone. Uh, sorry, correction, the speech title is Deep, Deep, Deep Down. Oh, my apologies, Andrew. With his speech, Deep, Deep, Deep Down, please welcome Andrew Kneebone. Back when we were able to roam free, I was enjoying a beautiful summer's day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and it was one of those summer's day where I'm already planning the barbecue I'm gonna have with the people that could come over at the end of the day. When all of a sudden in the distance, I saw a cloud that shouldn't be there. Because the reason that cloud exists is because there's a fire so large underneath it, it is forcing air up and creating its own cloud. And the last time I saw that, it was called Black Saturday. Contest chair and fellow Toastmasters and guests. Now, as a volunteer firefighter, I knew that my day was going to become incredibly busy. And sure enough, my pager went off and the captain's message was simple. Everybody on station now. On station, the captain said, there is a large fire in Eastern Victoria and Epping Brigade will be providing rolling support 24 hours a day for the foreseeable future. Andrew, I wanna see you in my office. In the captain's office, he said, I want you on the night truck tonight, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Who do you want on the truck with you? And I said, Savindi. And he went, she's a little inexperienced. Are you sure you want her on the truck? And I said, she is the perfect person. And between you and me, I just left before it could become a discussion. And I walked up to Savindi and said, congratulations, you're coming on the night truck with me tonight. Are you in? She turned to me and said, I don't think I have inside of me what it takes. And I said, Savindi, you absolutely have it inside of you, deep down. So are you in? Fist bump? Fist bump. She was in. Four hours later, we're down in Eastern Victoria in the staging area. There's about 100 trucks and about 600 people. And we're all gathered around the commander. As he said, the fire is too large. You cannot put it out but you're here to protect as many houses, livestock, and the people that remain as you can. Remember your training and good luck. And we made our way to our truck and we hopped into a team of five trucks. There was our truck in the middle and we rolled on out and we made our way towards the bruise of a horizon that was the smoke cloud and the sun setting behind us. And then we pulled over and as the blanket of night came over us and the stars twinkled. We waited and waited. And with this, a fear came up inside of me. Maybe I don't have what it takes deep, deep down. Well, I didn't have to wait too much longer because our radio blared to life. Sector 1463, proceed to grid reference 4AB6 for housing protection. And just like that, our trucks roared to life. And then we rumbled along. The news came in, fire was coming towards a house, there was a family inside and we were to protect as best we could. And then we went up and down a hill and then we saw the fire. How do I tell you this? How do I take you there? I will try, but I know that I will fail. Flames, twice the size of gum trees, twice the size. The heat was suffocating. There was a spark shower. It wasn't a spring shower of water, it was fire. My world was on fire. And as we passed the family, the parents in the window, their eyes said one word, please. I then experienced the greatest fear I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I completely froze up. And I'm not ashamed to say that. And then I looked to the left of me and Savindi had the same look on my face. And then something bubbled up inside of me. And I said the most inappropriate sentence. So Mindy, that fire has said something about my mother and I will not let that stand, will you? What? She said, I will not let that stand, will you? No, she said, neither will I. Water on. And we fought as the grass made its way towards the house. 
We knocked that out. As a branch came over and hit the house against the wall, we knocked that out. While animals made noises they shouldn't make, we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought. Alarms were going off. We're running out of water. We needed more water. The driveway we came through was now on fire. We punched through that, made our way to water, found some and got back into that fight and we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought until the fire front moved on and the house was still standing. We had done our job. Fist bump. And then we made our way to the waiting area and then we waited. And the rest of the night, we oscillated between fighting the fire, fighting the heat, the fear, and fighting later on exhaustion and hunger, and back and forward, and back and forward, and back and forward, until a beautiful red disc rose in the east amongst the wisps of smoke. And I knew that we had made it through the night, and we had done our duty. While I looked at that sunrise, Savindi said to me, I didn't think I had it inside of me to do what needed to be done tonight. And I said, Savindi, you were amazing tonight. And you had it inside of you. Deep, deep, deep down. We didn't lose one building that night. Not one. Now, fellow Toastmasters and guests, why do I tell you this story? Well, I'd like to submit it as evidence to something that I absolutely and utterly believe, and it is this. Deep inside of us, we have something that will carry us through. It will guide us and help us out when we need it. And all the firefighters that were fighting that day, they had it inside of them. There was nothing special about them whatsoever, but they had it inside of them. Just so do you. And it'll help you. Now, until you call, it will remain right there, waiting, deep, deep, deep down. <laughs>